Drew, are you there? I'm here. Is this Tony? It is. Can you see me, man? Do you no. want? Are you supposed to see me? Let's, yeah, let's do a video if you want. Can you see me? No, I see a. Uh, unless you're wearing, unless you're really close to the camera and wearing a leopard skin T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is me. Uh, let's see why. If you are looking at your screen, there should be a little video button. If you hover your mouse around, uh, it probably has an X through it. If you click on that, it'll turn the video on. Yeah, where are you? I know I've done this before. Home contracts. I see your name. History. Where's that little video, sucker? I don't know. It should be right under your... Bingo. Hey, there you are. All right, man. Hey, let me, uh, I'm going to make a little adjustment. So I'll be right back. Sure. Hold everything. Wait a minute. Wait for it. There we go. How's that? Looking good. You too. Thanks, man. So hey, man. Uh, you done like a million of these. Um, you ever get oh, tired of doing them? Oh, well, uh, yes. Uh, 847,621,000, but you're close. <laughs> so this is all pre-recorded. Um, and then we'll we'll throw it up. I got, I've got got my followers, and well, I'll, I'll send it over there to Shauna and... Um, you can do whatever you like with it. Yeah, right on. Glad to glad to chat with you today, man. Yeah, again, I appreciate your time. Thanks so much for being here. I'm, uh, I've seen your, I've of course, seen your videos. And I did the P90X, so uh, I'm a fan too, and a, and a host. So appreciate what you do. My pleasure. Wait, don't go away. breakfast <laughs> mm. so um anything you don't want to go over so i guess basically what i got from shauna was you want to talk a bit about your uh workout the newer workout is that the 22 minute hardcore yes. no i mean the, the subjects that matter the most to me are you know the 22 minute hardcore brand new premieres today so that's kind of interesting you're the first interview i've done while it's live ready to be bought you know by everybody awesome and then uh uh, yeah, the maids are here. Hold on, dude. <laughs> Eddie, you have to put that back? Yeah. Drew, give me a minute, dude. All right. It's chaos today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here we go. Right away. <clears throat> oh. Sorry, man. It's just there's a lot going on. 
It's all good. <laughs> oh, are you are you set? Um, anything else going on there? No, I probably the UPS guy will be here in about five minutes and uh, get a pool boy around there. Pool guy, yeah, pool boy. He's gonna come by, give me a massage. <laughs> All right. Well, what do you do with your personal time? I have, I have no issues. with. We won't, we won't cover that. But as far as top. Oh, yes. Yeah, so uh, obviously the big book, the big picture. Talk about that. What that's all about. Why I wrote that. Uh, Tony Horton Life, the website. Um, that's important. 22 Minute Hardcore and uh, a TH Care, which is uh, actually going to be out in um, about a week. So that's exciting. Um, and uh, sleep? yeah. Do you ever sleep? By well, twenty five minutes last night, nailed it. <laughs> All right, <Nailed>. so, <laughs> uh, sweet. Um, we're, I'm just gonna go over basically. We'll talk about all this. We'll just have a regular candid conversation like this, and you can throw in. I want to know about your fitness. You know what you got going on fitness wise. I want to talk about nutrition. So we'll tie it yeah. all into whatever you know products or ideas you want to share with us. Absolutely, man. Just fire away. You can ask me anything. All right. Yeah. So, are you good to get started? I'm ready to go. Okay, so, well, this is video. We'll, we'll edit it, but then audio is going to be completely different. That's going to go on air, so you okay. know, can be able to see us with that. All right, well, I'm just going to welcome you to the show. How's we'll that get in there. door behind me? Is that messed up, or is that all right? No, I can see you fine. All right, let me just close it. Hold on. Hey, Abraham. Yes, sir. Are you going to be drilling? No. I love you, man. Yeah, I'm on the Skype thing, so just... Okay. Okay. Pool guy? Ready to go. <laughs> um, I'm just going to welcome you, and we'll jump into it. Okay, good. All right, Tony, thanks so much for joining us today on Exploring Mind and Body. Drew, pleasure to be here, man. I'm... Uh... Willing to share everything I know about everything I know. <laughs> well, I know you got lots going on, and I know you know a lot. So we'll uh, we'll try to get you in it and out of here on, in a in a good amount of time. Yeah, no sweat, man. Well, I'm glad to cover it all. What is if someone says oh, my first main question? If someone says Tony Horton, what's your philosophy around fitness? What would, would the what's the first thing that comes to mind for you? I think uh, you know, there's a lot of things that. Uh, Combined mean a lot to me. Obviously, purpose I think would be first and foremost. Just having a general sense of why you're doing what you're doing, and uh, and, and that's important. You know, I think a lot of people are exercising for all the wrong reasons. Uh, too much about their ego and aesthetics and numbers on the scale and tape measures and what people think about them based on their effort, and and that's all great temporarily, but it's hard to sustain. And you know, it's about sustainability. It's about one's focus on health and wellness and diet and fitness so that they have a better life, that they're happier, they have more joy, there's more stimulation, there's more adventure, um, there's more curiosity. And that's what fitness and, and eating right will do. It's a lifestyle. I mean, everybody hears the word lifestyle. So what does that mean? In detail, that's what it means. It's about changing uh, the quality of your life um, physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, every which way. With it, you're better. Without it, you're not. I mean, who cares about your reflection in the mirror and what, the nice things that people say because you lost 15 pounds, which you'll probably gain again because your, your whole outlook is, is you know, on, not in the right direction. So when you I say guess. purpose, would you say the majority of people or, or supposedly the majority of people that don't follow through with a fitness plan with living a healthy lifestyle, they lack that purpose? Well, yeah, I think the ones that struggle that aren't, aren't succeeding long term, I mean, it's a long term thing. It's not, an, it's not an ephemeral journey so that you can look temporarily and take an after picture and show people later, even though you're 40 pounds heavier than that after picture. You know, I mean, that's just not the way to do it. It's, it's, sort, of, it's sort of having it click in that light that goes off above your head. Like what? Like, oh, sh oh, I almost swore, but I didn't. It, oh, shoot. <laughs> Thanks. It's, um, it's not about just losing the weight and looking good. It's about having more energy, having a greater optimistic view of, of life. Um, and that's what happens when you exercise. You know, you release chemicals inside of the brain that change the way you look at the world. People don't understand that. It's, it's like, oh, wow, how do you feel after a workout? Good. How do you feel when you skip one? Bad. Duh. <laughs> so don't just do skip. it. <laughs> All right. I mean, how do you feel when you hold your breath? After a while, it sucks. And what happens when you skip a meal? 
or two or three? Or what happens when you don't get a night of, night of sleep? What happens when you don't show up at work? Things go south, you know? <laughs> so you can survive like everybody else. Everybody's in survival mode. Get up, get in traffic, go to work, drink a bucket of coffee, eat a freaking hot dog for lunch, deal with the boss, get back in traffic, your wife's yelling at you, everybody's overweight, stressed out, <laughs> poor sleep, craving sugar, fat, salt, and chemicals. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Oh, look at you. There's Joe in the box on the ground. And he didn't have to have that life. He could have had a better one if he decided to move and eat whole grains and and try mountain biking. You know, I mean, it's 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 not hard. I mean, you know, do your best and forget the rest. I guess I'm known for that phrase. And that's all it is. I mean, I did a workout last night. I felt great. It's a workout that I normally don't feel great doing. It's plyometrics. It's 20 moves. Some of them are, in, are 100 reps. It's brutal. It's awful. But I'm a skier and I do it because I have to because at 57 – I want to rip down the mountain and, and feel like I can keep up with guys half my age. Today's workout, I felt weak as a kitten. Like I'm, I could barely curl my normal weight. I don't know. Who knows? I just showed up and did it because 80% of life is showing up. The other 20% is paying attention when you're there. So, boom. There's the mic. <laughs> That's it. That's the interview. Thanks for coming out. And you're welcome. Good night, everybody. That's all I got to say. How often, uh, you know what, age kind of thing, age kind of bugs me a little bit because it seems like more and more people are saying, or they, they kind of grunt when they get up and they're like, oh, I'm too old for this. And I mean, of course, we all seen you without your shirt on. <laughs> Have we? Um, it's half a shirt right there. <laughs> Look at right. those. You got, the, you got your tickets? Um, 57 years old. How often are you working out? Um... I try to work out 22 to 25 days a month. That's sort of the objective. If I can do that, I'm doing pretty well. 15 days a month means 15 days off. So you end up with exercise bipolar disorder. You know what I mean? Feel good, feel bad, feel good. You know, go to work every other day, see how that turns out. You know, so um, um, right now, today was number 17 out of 16 days. So I took a day, took Sunday off, but. Uh, it was 16 days in a row and then Sunday and then um, actually last night and t this morning. So, I mean, I try to work out every day. Right. Every Just day. in different ways. Just different ways. But my sequences and my workouts are such that, that I'm not hammering my legs every day or I'm not doing my biceps three times a week. You know what I mean? Right. It's plyo on, mon on Monday night. It was last night. This morning was shoulders and arms. Tomorrow's going to be a, a cardio circuit for one hour, five minutes on five machines. Keep going around, around, around. Uh, Thursday is, show, is uh, chest and back and abs. Um, Friday is a routine called balls and boxes, which is uh, you know plyo boxes and a lot of core on stability balls and balancing on uh, on um, Bosu balls. A lot of it's really rib cage down, leaving the upper body alone. Saturday is yoga. I'll either go in the morning at nine or in the afternoon at four, and then Sunday is the track workout. And if I'm feeling ambitious, I'll do a second workout on Sunday which is ropes and pegboards and muscle ups and handstands and you know more gymnastic like stuff. And then you repeat repeat repeat. Now a lot of people think, "Oh my god, I mean, you must be sore all the time." And initially you are, but you back off on the reps, you back off on the weights, you back off on the range of motion and you, you know, do what you can so you can get through it and you're going to be sore, but I it's hard for me to be sore now. I mean, I'm at that point where I go to the track on Sundays, I'm sore on Monday. <laughs> But uh, it's just it's just getting used to it, like anything else. You know, what I mean, Dean Carnazes ran fifty marathons in fifty days in fifty states. <laughs> that guy's okay. I can, I can work out seven days a week. Okay, <laughs> you know, I mean, whatever. This guy's been running a hundred miles. You know what I mean? So it, it's just all relative. It's just it's just you know, the more you do, the better you get, and it's always difficult at the beginning. It's called the learning process. You know what I mean? And then there's the adaptive process, and then there's sort of the kick ass process, which is. <laughs> Fortunately, where I am now, you know, so I wouldn't I wouldn't know how not to work. If I took three days off, I would probably start. I don't know. I'd probably go to a clock tower with a rifle. I would be a scary guy. <laughs> so for, for being sore, do you feel that you need to to avoid those plateaus that everybody talks about? Do you feel you need to entirely change your workout, shock your body into any kind of stressful situation so you can push past and see more results? Well, you know, in, in P90X, we called it uh, muscle confusion. But it's, it's, it's sort of a form of periodization training, which is what Jacqueline was doing in the 40s. You know what I mean? It's like stop thinking that the elliptical three times a week for a half an hour is going to do anything after a while. Of course you're going to plateau. You know, let's say the elliptical was the only thing you had. Well, then you better take that incline and go like this 
you better start working the arms. You better start going backwards. You better start turning that thing up to 12. You know, the only, the only way anybody gets better is that they have to put more pressure on different parts of the body to create a higher strain so that the muscles and the tendons and the ligaments and the heart and the lungs and the legs are all working a little bit harder. But it's easier to add more variety. I mean, I mean P90X has 12 different discs. You know, there's core synergistics, there's ab ripper, there's yoga, there's chest and back, there's shoulders and arms. You know, there's um, uh, Kempo. There's just a lot of different things. And so anybody who wants to really improve at a drastically fast rate um, needs to work on their weaknesses as much or more than their strengths. I mean, everybody gravitates to their strengths. If runners run and rowers row and <laughs> yoga people do yoga and Pilates right. people do Pilates. But they don't want to, you know, the, the cardio folks, you, you don't want to do the – the lifting and the lifters don't want to do the cardio and both groups need to do five other different things if you really want to see dramatic change. You're trying to avoid boredom, injuries, and plateaus, right? Those are the three things that take people down, that stifle them, that cause them to stop. You know, it's like, oh, no wonder you're bored. I mean, how can you do the same five-mile run twice a week for 10 years? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you know, some people are robots about it. They love to run. They get that that second wind and and they're off to the races but they're neglecting other parts of their fitness that they don't need to and so you know i mean we're stuck in this build and burn model everybody's built guys are building and girls are burning i mean that's sort of a, a gross general uh, generalization but that is pretty much the case so like i walk into 90 percent of most gyms crossfit's making a big change right you look at crossfit gyms of course there's issues with crossfit as well because sometimes it's too competitive the trainer's trying to you know kill people everybody's got shoulder back and knee issues but good crossfit gyms are the bomb i mean if you've really got a good coach a good trainer you know you're really working on dynamic movements working on multiple planes um working on athletic uh, on your athleticism P90X is like that. My brand new program, 22 Minute Hardcore, which is a boot camp program, eight week boot camp program, is like that. It's just getting down and dirty and adding a bunch of variety and working on your weaknesses and being okay with the fact that it's going to be ugly and you're going to be terrible and it's going to take time. And But, you know, it's like school. You know, you don't go from first grade to 10th grade, right? You got to, there's a whole, we take all, we take 12 years to get through school, but we freak out because we can't get to a 90 day program because there's yoga in it. You know what I mean? whatever i mean show up make it ugly and repeat 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 and it gets better over the course of time tell us more about this 22 minute hardcore program so 22 minutes a day that's it get in get out oh uh, that's it you know people say oh your p90x is an hour and your yoga is an hour and a half and you know blah 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 it, it's it's we are we are under the belief system that we got to be in the gym for an hour and a half for anything to happen but what happens with most people who are, you know, maybe weightlifting or doing resistance, there's a whole lot of downtime between movements. Because a lot of guys are, let me see how much weight I can lift. It's all about how much I bench and how much I squat. And it's all about these numbers, these antiquated numbers that have nothing to do with anything uh, about your fitness and your athleticism. You know, it's like arm size and and, you know, I'm benching two, you know, people go, Tony, how much do you bench? I go, I don't know. I stopped benching when I realized it didn't matter anymore. You know what I mean? I'm a skier. I'm a, I'm, I'm a, a rock climber. I'm benching it has nothing to do with the things I need to do. And so, you know, getting away from those ego based numbers and look, Hey man, if you want to body build and you want to, you know, you want to get big and that's your thing and it keeps you, you know, from smoking crack, well then I'm all, I'm all in, you know what I mean? I mean, that's great. But, I mean, the future of fitness for me is speed, balance, and range of motion. I'm 57. So, you know, watch older people train. They move slowly. They don't, like, they run like they've got a 100-pound pack on, you know what I mean? So I do sprint work on the track on Sundays. I do yoga on Saturdays. And I do, you know, I do core and functional stuff to keep the center strong so I can I can ski hard and I can ski steep stuff. And and I can move quickly, you know, and, and balance is, is no one works on balance. Like I have a slack line in my back backyard. I mentioned slack line to 100 people in the room and only two know what the hell it is. I just Never got mind. one. I love it. It's my new Dude, obsession. Dude, is that awesome? I, I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed. I can do it every day. No question. Yep. I mean, just <laughs> you're on there and your legs like, what's, what's this? It's because they're, all that connective tissue has never been woken up before. And it finally wakes up for the first time. You can get on a roller board or you can get on a, like a ski machine. But that slack line, man, that thing wants to move in, in, 
you know, 50 different directions and your body has to figure it out. And when you do, you, you don't fall off the curb at age 75, break your hip, go to the hospital in, in intensive care and end up in a box two weeks later. And that happens over and over and over in this country because people can't stand on one foot. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, you lift up one leg and people just fall over like a tree. And, and it, it's not like that as a kid. As a kid, you know, you, you have those proprioceptive uh, abilities, but, but as you get older, they go away. But like anything else, if you work on it, like the fact that you have a slack line, Drew, is, is genius. Get, get on that thing two or, time, three, two or three times a week. If you can walk back and forth on a slack line for the rest of your life, <laughs> that is the fountain of youth. If you can go through a, a, uh, an Ashtanga or Vinyasa-style yoga class with relative ease, that's the fountain of youth. You know, I mean, those are, those are the keys to, uh, to staying young. And, and it's not, you know, doing chest for an hour and a half and getting on the elliptical for 45 minutes. It just ain't, in my opinion. That's my opinion. Like, others might dispute that. <laughs> Tell me, let's talk about n- nutrition a bit. We'll come back to fitness. And well, what are you drinking right there? Those that are listening, I'm actually looking at Tony's smoothie right now. I'm at the bottom. <laughs> I'll tell you, Drew, here's what was in there. You were so good. You're inside of me now, you lucky beverage. <laughs> Do you There's often talk stro- to your smoothies? Or? Talking to my smoothie. I love you. <laughs> you help me stay young, you gorgeous green. It's grass clippings and in, uh, in, in ground dirt. And I've got some dust bunnies in there. Nice. No, it's blueberries, strawberries, cashews, kale, kale powder, something called athletic greens. Um, it's a whey protein. Uh, sometimes I use our Shakeology. You know, Beachbody has a product called Shakeology, which is like mind-blowingly good and helps so many people. But I like variety. Sometimes I'll use Brendan Brazier's product, Vega. I'll put Vega in there. Or uh, even Rob, uh, what's his name? Um, there's another brand that I use. And I just kind of rotate because it means variety, 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 right? Um, but... Uh, uh, so blueberries, strawberries, kale, cashews, uh, a lot of um, flaxseed meal, chia meal, you know, for digestive issues that help me. Any digestive issues, Tony? Are no, no, I don't think so. what was in there, you know what I mean? Prevention, right? You need the flow, baby, you need the flow, you know what I mean? <laughs> so uh, it prevents, you know, constipation and it prevents, uh, it's just, it's good for your digestion. So, you know, there's like, I don't know, 10 or 11 things in there. And I put in some um, unsweetened vanilla almond milk. And some ice cubes, so you, right in there, so good. <laughs> so you put um, whey protein in there with almond milk. Any reason? Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes I go egg white. Sometimes I'll go Shakeology, which is not whey. You know, there's rice protein. I just whatever flavor. Like sometimes I feel like chocolate. Sometimes I feel like vanilla. Sometimes I feel like mud. And today was kind of my mud uh, shake. Okay, tell me more yeah. about. Um, I gotta tell you real quick here. I was I have pumpkin. I have a smoothie every day. I go reach in the fridge and I had my pumpkin seeds in the fridge, and the lid is I like glass jars. I don't like plastic, so I got this lid that doesn't work properly, and I knew that I was in a rush, so I pick it up, and it dumps all over the kitchen. So mm-hmm. that was mm-hmm. my exciting. Uh, that was this morning. That was this morning. Yeah. Oh my god, dude. I, I've got this purple thing. It's like blueberries and so, but it's just purple, and it's just you know you, you look at it and it stains stuff, right? And I was reaching, I was on my phone, and I was reaching over to. It was full. Look how big this thing is, full to here. It goes on the edge of the table of my desk. It falls and just goes, <laughs> shriek, like just like splatters, and there's these curtains, and it just goes right up the curtains. Bounces on the floor, and then mo- the most of it is on the curtains and underneath the desk. Oh wow! And all over this this or- or- oriental carpet. And I went, I stood there. <laughs> you know what I say? Like it's like all of a sudden, just somebody just shot you. It's like, and then the f bomb came out for about mm, I'm gonna say 20 seconds, just straight. <laughs> and then I spent about an hour cleaning it up. It was fun. Exciting, exciting. I, I, my blender t- lid popped off. I was making a green smoothie, and I found green smoothie like under things that I couldn't possibly get in. On the anything. ceiling. Oh, you love it when it just gets like boom, right up under the ceiling. Oh, <laughs> I gotta clean up. But you know, back to the food. I'm gonna bring us back around. Thank you. It's about the few, the food. It's always about the food. The food is the reason why. Food is the sole reason why there's a healthcare crisis. There's nothing else you can blame. It's not. 
car accidents and gunshot wounds. It's just not. It's, you know, and hospitals would be empty. They could knock them down and build parks if people began to figure out how to use this and their gob. It's this and their gob. Now, you know, they're stressed out because of work or they've got cultures that says, you know, you can eat fried foods your whole life or drink soda pop or buckets of, of Mountain Dew and, and Doritos. And it's just, you know, we're just we're poisoning ourselves slowly for decades and decades because we're addicted to fat, sugar, salt, and chemicals, right? So in Whole Foods, you know, people don't know how to prepare them properly. No one showed them how. So, you know, a big thing of steamed broccoli tastes like freaking wax and cardboard, and nobody wants to eat that every day. And it's just about, you know, and if I look at the, the field guide, we call it the, uh, the nutrition field guide for the brand new 22-minute hardcore. You know, it's just really thin. It's all about using spices and sauces, man. I mean, there's certain foods that you don't like, so put something else on them so they taste better, so you'll eat them consistently. Duh. It's like, what is rocket science about that? You know, asparagus and, and, and cauliflower and, and broccoli and Brussels sprout, these are not my favorite foods. I want to eat a Snickers bar and I want a Dr. Pepper, but I, I know that that's going to create real, real issues for me immediately after I'm done and long-term in my life. Like I know what the consequences of those kinds of foods are. And so, you know, if I'm out skiing all day, five hours charging and there's a Snickers bar on the counter before I check out, I'm going to buy myself that Snickers bar and I'm going to eat it and I'm going to just cherish it. And then I'm going to go back out and ski for another two hours and I'm going to burn it up. But people eat Snickers bars for breakfast. You know, you get up in the morning and you think, wow. I mean, people eat birthday cake every single morning for breakfast. Millions of people across this country eat birthday cake in the form of waffles and pancakes. They get up. It's white flour, there's butter and sugar, and just stick a damn candle in and blow it out because the more you eat waffles and pancakes for breakfast, the less birthdays you're going to have, all right? So, you know, what happened to egg whites and some grilled vegetables with some avocado and salsa on top? Yeah, hello. Or steel-cut oats with blueberries and strawberries. It's not like I'm asking you to eat poison or, or freaking dirt. I mean, these things taste good. And, you know, and then whatever, you put whatever kind of, you know, chili flakes on there or whatever you want in there just to add some flavor. And it's not that hard, you know. So, so you know, food is, is the – I can't tell you how many people have done P90X or P90X2 or X3 and didn't do the diet thing. They got a little stronger. They got more flexible. They felt better throughout the day. But there wasn't really that weight loss. There wasn't really that sort of cleansing of the brain and the body. They just kept eating what they were eating because they figured, well, I'm working out too. I might as well have to reward myself with this crap food every day. No. It doesn't mean you got to be a monk on a mountain with, you know, with your own organic garden and your sheep and cattle and chickens in the yard. All right. No, you just need to eat healthy food 80 percent of the time. 80 percent of the time would be would be amazing. The whole the, every the healthcare crisis would end in, in six months. Done. Gone. <laughs> what's it would the, disappear in six months. So what's the biggest issue? Why aren't we? putting in the time, the effort to educate ourselves and, and do the work that needs to be done in the grocery it's store hard. and in the kitchen. It's hard. It's hard. People love their sugar, their fat, their salt, and their chemicals. They love it. They've been eating it forever. They're addicted to it. Food is an addiction. I got off of sugar because I was doing everything right, but at the end of dinner, I would have a big bowl of ice cream with some chocolate sauce. I, I had clean breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. After dinner, I want to have my big sugar bomb. And I didn't sleep well, and I was my love handles were kind of, you know, I mean, I was fit, but... I was, there was this one thing I thought, well, what if I had the discipline for 30 days to just get off the desserts? Because I love key lime pie. I love brownies. I love chocolate chip cookies straight out of the oven. <laughs> ten of them. I mean, blink, blink, ten of them are in my body. I, I mean, I'm a sugar addict. I mean, I woke, I got up every day as a kid and had frosted flakes or, you know, alphabets or Quisp or Quake, you'll have to Google those two. Those are a long time ago. <laughs> Captain Crunch, Cocoa Krispies, Cocoa Puffs, Cocoa, Cocoa, Cocoa cereal with sugar on top. Hello, whole milk. No, no surprise. I was sound asleep by fourth period in class. I was putting poison in my. My parents didn't know it was on TV, so we bought it and we ate it. You know, and we had frozen dinners that were filled with who the hell knows what. You know, I mean, it's just, it's just. You, you can educate yourself and you can know what's good and you can know what's bad. But the actual process of eating those meals every single day 
day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year is hard to do. Because it comes at breakfast, it comes at lunch, it comes at dinner, it comes every two or three hours. And that's a big shift for a lot of people. The exercise thing, you know what, I know that's important, I'll do it. But the food is what causes disease. And the food is either going to fuel you or it's going to kill you on some level. And so if you can get that straight, you can figure that out. Um, and, and it's not about eating, for me, it's not about eating lower calorie versions of crap food. That's what a lot of diet programs are. Like, oh, you can eat your chocolate cake and you can have your key lime pie and you can have your cheesecake. You just eat smaller versions but that's not healthy food. You know, there's healthy food and there's unhealthy food. There's foods that have high calories and things that have low calories. So when you're eating whole grains, fruits, vegetables, lean proteins, and healthy fats, you can't – you literally can't overeat that stuff. You can't because of the quality of the ingredients. Fast food, you, you can't. And then you wake up in the morning and you want more. And what a shock that you're 100 pounds overweight. So – I mean, the, I mean, I'm I'm not a nutritionist. That's not what I do for a living. But common sense tells you what's what's healthy and what isn't. But figuring out how to make that kind those kinds of foods to taste good is is still a big mystery. A lot of people don't know how to do it. One of the things that kind of stuck out in uh, and I was checking out what you do is you wrote somewhere that talking about prep your meals on Sunday made so simple. It's genius. You know, I tell everyone you cook a big batch of this you can eat it throughout the week you save time in the kitchen tell me about that well like you know big casseroles are great you know let's say you just whatever you want to put in there man i mean there's so many different versions you get one of those big glass pans you know what i mean i mean massive and you whatever that takes you know i mean some people aren't cooks so that's just not going to happen for people who don't like to, to figure that stuff out but any kind of vegetable you want you know uh, polenta throw in some beef some you know grass-fed beef elk bison buffalo chicken you know, whatever, you know, lamb, whatever your thing is, man. And it's just like cutting out brownies, but it's all layered down, whatever it is, peas, carrots, onions, garlic, you know what I mean? Just, just whatever your casserole dish is. That's one way to go. It's really simple. And then, you know, boom, there's your lunch, there's your dinner. I mean, you don't want to eat, sometimes people don't want to eat the same thing all the time, but that casserole is there. Like that'll be your, that'll be your, your dinner, for seven days or that'll be your lunch for seven days breakfast is easier i mean breakfast is you know and is eggs and, and and whole grain maybe nine grain bread just just the healthier stuff more normal stuff but that's yeah uh, another thing too is just soups like just like my wife shauna will make this big chicken stew in a pot this oh my god barely fits in the refrigerator and she just every freaking vegetable she can imagine just chicken and just spices and just pff, grr, and there's so many recipes like you can go to beachbody.com and you can see two dozen recipes on that kind of stuff you know love soups um, i could eat soups all the time soups are great it's like a stir fry you put whatever you want in there Super whatever you easy. want whatever can't you go want. wrong you can't you know like from for when i was in jackson hole and i don't cook and i've, I've been training this um a buddy of mine now you know that's the reason why we've worked out 17 out of 16 days we would get we would go to the store and we get already cooked brown rice we get um, sort of this black bean with tomatoes and onions and peppers, but it's mostly black beans with a couple of vegetables put in there. And we just put them in the fridge. So you got your brown rice, you got your black your black beans with vegetables, and then some grilled chicken, and we get that in there. Um, and in the morning, I would take uh, and I bought all egg whites, you know, egg whites that are separated, and I just pour in like maybe five or six egg whites, and then crack in about two or three regular eggs just for yolk little bit of yolk and I'd start cooking that up and it was maybe about halfway you know done throw in the brown rice throw in the black beans tear up the chicken throw it in there mix it all up and you've got a big bowl of beans and veggies and rice and chicken and egg and then you slice the avocado put that on top I we had that probably 10 out of the out of the 15 days we were in Jackson Hole because it's just awesome. You know, a little salt and pepper on there. So and easy. Done. So easy. It doesn't take much. That's how you start your day. Yeah. Tell me about the big picture. <clears throat> the big picture. Um, you know, I've written three books. Uh, I wrote Bring It and I wrote Crush It. And I thought if I named the last, the next one, Annihilate It or Destroy It or Punch It in the Face, I just didn't think that would be good. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> Punch It in the Face. Can you see that on the title? <laughs> I could see you doing that. <laughs> that yeah, could actually, be yeah, a good. book, man. <laughs> 
But I understand that, that fitness is not just the physical, it's the mental and emotional. And so how do you combine all those things? Like what are the, what are the, what are the, the, the ways of the world when it comes to being able to, you know, find a formula that, get, that, that, that forces you to work a little harder, um, be more consistent, understand the, the consequences of, of poor choices over good ones. And, and that's, and, and basically it's a book that I wrote for myself. Like, you know, when I used to journal, there are these themes that came up for me. Like, what were the things that were working? And I know I was going to Deepak Chopra seminars and Tony Robbins books and, and Don Miguel Ruiz. And I mean, I read all the self-help book because of stuff because, and I went to the seminars, you know, uh, Temenos and Aston because I was searching because I was miserable and I had a speech impediment and I was unhappy and I didn't have a good relationship and I was up to my eyeballs in debt and I live in a crappy apartment with a view of a convalescent home you know what I mean I'm watching the 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 the, the old come in and the dead go out and I'm going oh my god if I keep this up I'm gonna have to walk down the stairs across the alley and that's where I'm gonna live you know what I mean and I just was determined to be better and happier and more productive and have the life that I thought I deserved. So I, I read all these different books and I went to all these seminars and when I did, I would, I would, and I swear this is the truth, 80% of it didn't resonate. Like that's bull and that doesn't affect me. But there was always a nugget, like Tony Robbins would say a thing and I'd go, yeah, man. And I would grasp that and I'd make it mine. And then, you know, whatever, some other guru would, I'd take that, I'd take that, I'd take that. And it became the 11 laws. You know, the big picture is about the 11 laws that will change your life. And so it's about one of them is reality. Like reality is this thing that's actually happening to you. But then there's also the pretend version of your life that you present to other people so that you can appear like everything's okay. But what, what if we learn to eliminate that one? Because that's not helping you. That's keeping you back. That's keeping you stuck. And learning about haters and blockers and and all these people in your life that, that you cling on to because you're related to them or you grew, up to high, you grew up in high school with them or those are the guys you used to get drunk with on the weekends. But you know what I mean? You can keep them around, but you know what I mean? And they're going to, when the minute you want to sort of get better or improve or eat better or exercise, they're going to give you a bunch of crap for it. Like, what are you trying to do? Yada, yada, yada. And just finding the courage to stop caring about, about what other people think of you, be in the moment more often, face your reality. Um, and begin to make change and understand that it doesn't have to be perfect. You can't compare yourself to others or the past or try to pretend that the future is going to be a certain way because of expectations. And all these things that we do over and over and over again, we beat ourselves up and we make these comparisons that have nothing to do with the present and who you really actually are. And so there's purpose and there's intensity and there's consistency and there's accountability and there's rest and relaxation. And these are all part of the laws that are in the book. And, and there's a lot of humor in it, you know, because I like to be sort of a clown. I'm America. Somebody labeled me the America's fitness clown. Thanks <laughs> for that. Clearly don't have a problem with it. Oh, me. Because too often, right, we look at this health and wellness world and everybody is very serious. And you've got to make sure that you um, work on your flexibility and uh, have rock. Bang. All right. First of all, I have to be disciplined with my food, and that sucks, and that's hard. And now you want me to work out all the time. Like, I've never done that before. And, and when I do it, there's physical pain and anguish and, and uh, a judgment. And so now you're going to be serious throughout the process? No, thank you. I think I'd rather just eat whatever I want, smoke a bunch of dope, and lay on the couch. You know what I mean? And, and the reality is it's a delivery system. You know, like, why does, uh, why does somebody get elected or why does somebody get a TV show or why do I end up where I am is because I have a delivery system that is atypical to others and I'm not having – this is who I am. I'm always like this. I'm like this in the DVDs. I'm like this in person. I'm not like this when I'm having sex or sleeping, but I'm mostly like this, you know, and it's because I eat right. I exercise all the time. I control my stress. I get plenty of hydration and I get my seven to eight hours of sleep every night. It's not like I'm asking people to split the atom here. All right. Or write uh, their first 9000 page novel. I'm just telling you to eat good, move poorly. Well, doesn't matter. Move um, <laughs> asleep. <laughs> all right. Why are you craving food and garbage in the morning? Because you got six and a half hours of sleep. Your cortisol levels are through the roof. You throw back a, 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 a bucket of coffee. You have an argument with your spouse or girlfriend. Then you get in traffic. What a shock. You're going to die 15 years earlier than than you were scheduled to. We're going to go for three reasons, Drew. It's environmental. So if you're in Flint, Michigan, get some bottled water. If you're living next to Fukushima, move. All right? I mean, it's, it's air, water, environment, stress. That's 
your environment. Number two is genetics. Can't control that. Your parents had sex. They made you. This is who you are. Got to do your best with what you got. But the one that takes us down early before our time is behavior. Behavior is the reason why there's a health care crisis, and that is the universal truth. So change your behavior. The environmental and the genetic uh, have to be altered because you change the way you live your life. Let's talk about TH core. Is that what you uh, said? Uh, Tony Horton Care. Sorry, Care. Nice. Tony Horton Care. This, this is kind of my new my new venture outside of Beachbody. I've had a phenomenal relationship with Beachbody. I mean, it's completely changed my my lifestyle. It's changed the lifestyle of millions of people around the world. You know, working with them to create these amazing programs. They let me kind of go free range. Someone's coming in. It's my electrician. He's fixing my lights. Um, and so. Uh, I wanted to, you know, I, I had sort of skin issues because I was in the sun all the time. I went from Connecticut to California. It's, it's sunny here all the time. And so I thought it was a good idea to cover myself in baby oil and because and I was I didn't, didn't have anything going on. And I'd get in suntan booths and I'd get in, you know, out in the sun. And I just, and I'm Irish and English. And so I just destroyed my skin, man. And I was, I'm always looking for ways to try to make improvements. You know, I mean, I, sometimes I was doing lasers and I was just, you know, I was trying to make up for that that 25 years of cooking my skin in the sun. Oh my God. I'm sure my vitamin D was good, but that was it. My skin, my skin was crushed. So, you know, I met, uh, I met the, uh, the guys that enjoy, I, I knew the, the CEO. He invited me to come on his TV show and be in his, on the cover of his magazine. And we just started talking and I said, can you help me with this? My skin is crazy dry. I've got all these, you know, sun th issues. And I just wanted to come up with a basic face in, uh, body lotion i don't i don't want to have like like what's different why does when where's the change at your jawline your neck your collarbone like what why, why do i have one for my face no same thing with sh like is shampoo and body uh, soap that different really i mean you know i mean there are people have different kinds of hair and skin i just wanted tooth products one for my skin you know to moisturize and one for my whole body to wash my hair so one's called fitness one called one's called workout and they're organic ingredients there's just there's no there's nothing to make it suds more they're, and they smell nice and they're for men and women. And we're starting out with these two products. It's called Tony Horton care. You can go to Tony Horton life slash T H care and you'll find it. Um, and it's reasonably priced too. You know what I mean? So, so, so non-toxic, non we're not putting toxic organic ingredients, no artificial stuff that you're going to break out with. And so we've had a lot of really good response um, on both, both the, both the lotion and the hair so far. And, you know, everybody has – it's all about smell and viscosity. Like people will buy things just for all the wrong reasons. If it smells nice, you know, regardless of how it's drying out your skin. It, and it's about pH balance. You know what I mean? Your body has a – I think it's 3.5 to 4.5 pH balance. And so things that are super sudsy are like 8 you know what I mean? And just not really good for you. But most companies don't care because it's not like people are breaking out and, and uh, psoriasis or anything from their products. It's just that people will use what they use because of whatever, the packaging, the smell of the stuff, how much suds is up, you know what I mean, or whatever. Um, and, and we're just trying to put out a really good product. And we, and we made it for me. You know, I mean, I went to uh, Patrick. He's the CEO of the company. I said, can you just make something for me? And then we just started manufacturing it. And it's going to launch – next week wow yeah. and then we had you said before we got started here we're one of the first interviews here for your 22 minute hardcore mm. that's pretty cool yeah yeah it is pretty cool it launches today um yeah you can go to uh you can go to beachbody.com and get it you can go to 22 minute hardcore and buy it you can also it's also on beachbody on demand which is our our streaming you know if you don't want to do the old school discs and paperwork you can get everything right here on your laptop or your phone uh, and it's called 22 Minute Hardcore. And, and you know, I've been to 46 military bases around the world. The first, I had a meeting at the Pentagon one day. Somebody just said, hey, you know, a lot of people in the military are using your stuff. So uh, there's a division in the Pentagon. There's a lot of them called uh, AFE, Armed Forces Entertainment. It's like um, the USO, but it's just another division out of the Pentagon. And so it's Army, Air Force, Navy, Marine, Coast Guard. It's bases not only domestically, but also internationally. So uh, AFE handles all the uh, the foreign tours. So I've been to Kosovo, I've been to Korea, I've been to Japan twice, I've been to Italy, I've been to Germany, I've been to France, I've been to England. You know, I've been to these uh, bases. I was going to go to Afghanistan and Iraq, but it was kind of a funky period where you know they were shooting at everybody. So so uh, I never get a, got a chance to go over there. But 
there was a uh, colonel, Colonel Stephen Shepro, who's now a two-star general on the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Uh, and there's only 25 of those guys, so he's moved his way up. But he was using uh, P90X. He had all his all his guys and gals in uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan when he was stationed over there using P90X. So I had the meeting with I had the meeting at um, at uh, at the Pentagon, and then I met uh, the colonel at that time, and he was at my wedding. He's just a phenomenal, Amer- amazing American. He can fly. He can speak like he speak like five or six languages, and he's qualified in jets and helicopters. He's such a stud, you know, and he's just a cool cat, man. You just you just you meet amazing people in my in my field. So I went to uh, I went to Andrews Air Force Base where they you know where they keep Air Force One and all the all the Marine One helicopters and stuff for the president, and I did a workout for you know for four hundred guys. That used to be four tennis courts, and the and the colonel tore the tennis courts out and just made it a big P ninety X room. It was just <laughs> like you walk in. It was the first time I ever worked with the military. Everybody's in perfect lines. Everybody's got their arms and at ease with their behind them white t shirts. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I hope I you know don't screw this up. Am I in the right room? <laughs> What's that? Yeah, am I in the right room? Shouldn't there be like a master sergeant in here kicking some butt? And and then they were awesome, and because you know Colonel Shepro or now General Shepro had them doing it for months and months and months on a huge screen, and now they had me live, and I was hooked. I was hooked. You know, I mean, and you fly in C-17s, and uh, and you get to shoot machine guns, and uh, and you get to see the world, and you you know, my first tour was in Italy, uh, Camp Darby, Camp uh, Vicenza, and Aviano. So what was it? Army, Air Force, and Marine Base uh, over there. And and I've been to 46 since, you know, I mean, I've been all over the country and all over the world. And the next one's being planned as we speak. So the long, the short end of the story is that connection was so strong and they often take a PT test in some, some branches twice a year. And what happens if you're not, you know, if you're not, you know, out in the field, you're not, you know, um, you know, putting on a gun and going out, um, you know, wherever you are and you're just doing administrative stuff. These guys were not guys and gals weren't passing the PT test and you get booted. And so, you know, my, my and, and we all want to support the troops, right? Because I support the troops, I support the troops. Well, how about you get down and dirty for eight weeks at a boot camp style and then really get a connection? And we cast um, all all active, not active, but all vets uh, it to be in the cast. And so it's an eight week boot camp with a one week hell week. Uh, you don't have to do the hell week, but most people, when they get to that point, want to do it. And um, we shot on the deck of the USS Iowa. We shot up in the dirt and the mud. Up, up in the hills of Malibu, and uh, we were also in an in uh, Air Force uh, hangar. You can hear jets and planes take off behind us. It's pretty cool. So the set was really cool. We had 16 to 22 people in every cast. I used to have just three behind me in, in, X, in X2 and X3. And, um, and we've had four test groups go through it already, and the results are off the chain because it's just like bang, 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 bang. You know, it's just burpees and push-ups and, and lateral movements and gorilla crawls and and spider crawls and you know you're just down and you're down and dirty and you can use us we have a, a sandbag which is kind of a cool feature and um you don't really need anything else to pull a bar on, on a couple of them but you don't even need that so tell me about this back basics tell me about this gorilla crawl i saw everyone talking about the hardest workout oh yeah wait wait i'll show it to you wait a minute can you see me back there hold on <laughs> all right we can i can see you Back and forth, man. <laughs> oh. And how long <laughs> you doing? You all right there? I'm good, man. How long are you I'm doing still there? Fly uh, it's all rep count. So here's the other cool thing about the program. Um, unlike P90X, in some workouts, you'd see 24 different exercises. And so you've got that variety there, right? And uh, Or 12, maybe 12 to 24. Here, there's only five exercises, sometimes seven. And so you would do the – and what happens with every exercise, each one very different from the next because you want to kind of keep moving. You don't want to overdo the legs, overdo the upper body. So you got a lot of core, a lot of cardio, a lot of upper body, a lot of lower body. But, it's, you know, it's mostly body weight like those gorilla crawls. On the first round, you would do uh, your maximum number. So there's, there's five exercises, three rounds. So you do maybe 50 of one. And on the next exercise, you do your lowest number and then your highest, then your lowest, then your highest. And that reverses low, high, low, high, low, and then back to high, low, boom, boom, right? So you're doing a different rep count on every exercise. And uh, so some rounds get harder, some rounds get easier. Um, But that's all part of the big strategy. And there's a cadence. So if you're 
if you're doing burpees, for example, everybody's doing this. Because usually, you know, in P90X, I would say, all right, Bobby's going to do 12. Alice is going to use the assist band. She's going to do eight. All right, everybody go. And so you're kind of doing your own thing and you record your stuff. Uh uh-uh, uh, not here. We are a unit. We are a team. And so a burpee would look like this. There's, you know, picture 22 people in the workout and you at home. And you go. <laughs> One, two, three, four. One, two, three, two. One, two, three, three. <laughs> That's awesome. And right? then you have a ton of people doing this at the same time. That oh, my been- God. I did it with a room uh, in Century City about a month ago. Uh, two different classes, 200 people each. Oh you got two, gosh. and most people aren't used to just kind of doing their push-ups and looking around and how many should I do? And it's that's great and it's effective and it works. And we, you know, we've sold seven million copies of P90X, but this is a brand new vibe, man. Just brand spanking new, all different, serious stuff going on back there. <laughs> um, you hear all the clanking? Yeah. So we're excited, man, and, and the the uh, people are just super fired up. So that's awesome. Um, and then just before I let you go, what's going on with you, Tony? What's going on? I know that you're launching this, um, and we just talked about the big picture. What's going on at uh, Tony Horton Life before I let you get on with your day here? Well, you know, TonyHortonLife.com is the website. So people want to know where I am, where my public speaking is, what I'm selling. You know, you can go to 22. You can get, get uh, you know, I, I can give you BeachBody.com. I can give you 22 minute. Uh, hardcore.com. I can give you Tony Horton Life slash thcare.com. But if you want to know anything and everything me, just go to Tony Horton Life. And it's all right there. Anything you want to buy, anything you want to see, anywhere you want to go. We just got back from a four day yoga, ski, ride, laugh, fun fest in Jackson Hole. We had 32, 33 people there. And uh, we've got another one coming up in Mammoth, California uh, at the end of March. And there's still openings there for that. Uh, and then I'm at the Omega Institute in upstate New York in, in June, and that's a, a, a three-day intensive um, workshop, workout, autographs, uh, photographs, just hanging out, man. Um, and we that maxes out at 100 people. Last year we had 98, <laughs> and uh, we think it'll sell out pretty quick. And it's basically, uh, you know, it's part big picture, it's part 22-minute hardcore, it's part P90X3. It's just part focus groups on, you know, what's kind of keeping you from being the badass you want to be on this earth. We have an obstacle course with teams. It's really cool. That's the Omega Institute. So, you know, like, oh, I can't remember all that stuff. Just go to Tony Horton Life and it's all right there. Do you ever take a break? Do you ever take a break? Do you take a week off, a month off? Or is this, you just all, this is just, this is you all the time. No question. Well, you know, you get used to it. You just get, you, you schedule your workouts and you do it. You know, you know where you're going to get your food. And so you eat it, you know, and then, you know, I, my, my wife is also my assistant because she likes to know what I'm up to and she can kind of help control things. And, you know, I wake up at two o'clock in the morning. <gasps> oh, my God. What time is that, that Skype interview with Drew? She'll go, it's at 10 o'clock. You know, so <laughs> so um, I love downtime, man. I mean, I love downtime at night. I mean, I, I mean, I, I DVR like 50 shows, you know what I mean? I mean, I, I love I mean, it goes full tilt most of the day, and then at six six thirty seven, I'm on the couch, man. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it's the, you know I, t- I TiVo sixty minutes. I got to watch that. You know what I mean? I got a couple of Laker games. I'm going to the Laker game tonight. That'll be fun. And um, you know, I love sitting on my butt on the couch at the end of the day. And you know, you know, it's all about yin and yang, right? I mean, the pendulum's got to swing in both directions. Even though I'm going full tilt throughout the day. You know, I'm chilling at night and getting eight hours of sleep, you know, and and waking up to a nice, beautiful breakfast. And that's all downtime. And so the thing is that some people are way too relaxed and doing nothing and barely getting by. And other people are full tilt. And both groups at either end of the spectrum are going to die young because they don't have the balance that they need. Right. And so I understand that. I mean, I'm the laziest guy in the world. I'm forced to be busy because I hate being sad and poor and and debt and all those things. I mean, the his, the memories of days gone by are so powerful that, you know, like why would I want to start my own skincare and shampoo line? I didn't have to do that. And the amount of work that's got to go into it and, and the, and in the production and the, in the videos and that's all extra stuff. And it's all speculative. I don't know if anybody's going to buy that. 
You know, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm, I get a royalty rate just like I do with Beachbody for for these products, but they're good and they help me. And like my, so does my philosophy and my my workouts, and and it's changed my life. And so other people are still struggling in certain areas, and I want to help. I mean, my purpose is to give people theirs, and that and that's. That's a good feeling because it's not about me anymore. You know what I mean? Back in the old days, it was always about me. Like, how do I survive? How do I eat? How do I pay my bills? Me, 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 me. Now, I'm in a situation where I've learned a little bit over the course of three decades. And I want to share what I know because other people are struggling like I was. And I want them to feel better and have have financial security and and have a sense of adventure and learn that, you know, healthy food and exercise will is the fountain of youth. That's how it tra- changes your life. That's what keeps you young. You know, you can you can age numerically, but biologically, you can slow that rate way down. You can take tests that blood and flexibility and muscle strength and urine and poop. I don't know how they do it all, but they basically you know suck all your stuff out and they do it. They analyze it, and I'm numerically fifty seven, but I'm biologically twenty nine. Mm. Look at you. So according, according to the science of it. So, I mean, am I as fast on the track as I was? No, but I can do more pull-ups than ever, more push-ups than ever. I can curl 50s. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I can go to a yoga class and barely break a sweat. It's it's awesome. And But, you know, it requires 22 to 25 days a month, healthy eating, good sleep, and hydration. Done. I'm going to get you out of here on this question. One more question. Mm. You, all, you all right with one more question? I am. I just want to know. I want to know that the t- uh, if you had a tipping point, or if there was a tipping point in your life when you talked about, you know, maybe not living a healthy lifestyle, or or being in debt, or or changing your life to going through your seminars. Was there a tipping point? Was it a slow progression? How did you make that transition from who you were to who you are? Well, if you look at the term tipping point, you know what I mean. It usually had a lot of steps before the aha, right? Where you went, ah, oh, now I I, I could. Uh, officially eliminate whatever that was because it doesn't serve me anymore. And now there's this, as the Japanese say, a satori, a moment, a tipping point where you can kind of move on and, and just be this new person. I, I think it, one of them was when I moved to California because whatever was going on on the East Coast just wasn't working. And it was just it was just showing up in a completely different place. New environment. Where, where gyms were on every corner and there were health food stores that I didn't know about. I mean, I didn't know about kale or quinoa, or avocado. Avocado, are you kidding me? And there are still people who look at an avocado and go, I don't, I don't, I don't want to eat that. Or sushi. Right. Like sushi, raw fish, what am I, a freaking, what am I, a grizzly bear? You know what I mean? I mean, so sometimes you just got to get up from where you are and go someplace else. Like when I was in Japan, when I was in Tokyo the first time, uh, what? You look at the skyline of Tokyo, and I never had a passport till I was in my 30s. 80% of most Americans don't even have a passport, man. And you, know, and you think about, well, they don't speak English. Well, so what? Most people, most countries do. You'll figure it out. You know, like I know people who have never been to Japan, never been to London, never been to Korea or, or, or England or Siena, Italy. Like, wow, just go, to, just go to Florence, Italy. Just go there and stand there and try to not be. <laughs> like you walk down an alley and there's a 4,000 year old marble sculpture of Jesus like in a wall in an alley next to garbage cans it's like the whole damn place the alleys are beautiful it's it's just amazing we're so used to you know traffic and strip malls and, and there's things out in the world so I, I think you know that's what fitness did for me I'm moving to California starting to exercise opening up my world being less of a procrastinator uh, more of a doer saying yes more often than no it just changed everything man you know I mean it's it's that was really it. I think the second tipping point, if I had a second tipping point, was knowing that I could be – remember the first time we shot a Power 90 workout and I was scared to death, just so petrified to being on stage, three cameras, cast behind me. Like I knew this was – we were going to be here all day, you know, and, and everybody – the expectations were so high and I was frightened to death. But having done that a couple times and getting through it and knowing that I wasn't terrible – I, I felt I went. Oh yeah, okay. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna be pretty good at this. Now they'll schedule an eight-hour shoot, and I'll do it in three. You know what I mean? Like boom, boom, boom. Because it's when you do things. You know, the more you do, the better you get. Food, fitness, performing, finances, relationships. The more you do, the better you get. I mean, you're gonna fall flat in your face a bunch of times, but that's part of the process, and that's that's perfect. Though I think those are the two: moving here and then knowing that I'd be pretty good at this 
on camera thing. <laughs> Fantastic, Tony. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for coming on, exploring mind and body and sharing uh, up close and personal with Tony Horton. Drew, my pleasure, man. Thanks for having me on. All right, we're going to cut it off right there. Okay, man. So uh, that was awesome, Tony. Um, like I said, yeah, I have a tendency to ramble, but I hope that's all right. <laughs> no, it was great. I appreciate it. Thank um, you. Yeah, thanks so much for coming on, Tony. And thanks, Shauna, as well. She was great with uh, setting this up and, and getting us to, uh, hooked up together. Oh, without her, I don't know, man. I'd live in a van down by the river. So <laughs> I believe Van it. down by. Yeah, I would. But she just keeps <laughs> me from wandering off into the woods. Come back. Come, no, there's squirrels over there. You get, get to come back to the house. So, yeah, she's just. And, and, you know, and my life isn't as stressed out because of her. So I'm glad, she, you know, she's the goddess that, uh, that she is, that she was able to. We all need a Shauna, don't we? Yeah, we all need a good Shauna. All right, Tony, I'll let you get on with your day. Once again, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. All thank the, you. Dude. All the best to your everything you do, your, your new workouts, everything you got going on. Yeah, I appreciate it. Appreciate all it very right, much. Man. Thanks a lot. Thanks for helping me uh, spread the word. You got it. Take care, Tony. Bye.